Animating and revealing elements on a web page only when the visitor scrolls a certain amount is very common in web design. There are a variety of JavaScript libraries that help to achieve that, but we can actually do it ourselves in a couple of easy steps. That being said, the first step we need to do is to know what is the size of the viewport. If you don't know what is the viewport, it is basically how much space we can see from the document. In this case, I set the document width and height to 5000 pixels, which we are not able to see entirely, but only 952 by 1903 pixels, which represent the width and height of the current viewport. That said, if we start resizing the window, you see that it affects the size of the viewport, obviously. So how do we get these values, you might be asking. Well, the answer is so simple, the height and width of the viewport are stored in the client width and the client height properties. The next step we need to do after we understood what is the viewport and how to get its size is to know the distance between the element we want to animate and the top and left edges of the viewport. To get these values we need to call the getBoundingClientRect method on the element we want to animate. This method returns an object that has 8 properties which are width, height, x, y, top, right, bottom and left. Top and Y refer to the same thing, which is the distance between the top edge of the element and the top edge of the viewport. Bottom represents the distance between the bottom edge of the element and the top edge of the viewport. Left and X refer to the same thing, which is the distance between the left edge of the element and the left edge of the viewport. Right represents the distance between the right side of the element and the left side of the viewport. Width and height represent the width and height of the element including any margins, paddings and borders. Now combining what we've learned so far, let's start scrolling the page from top to bottom and see if you can figure any relation between the viewport height and the top value. Well, the relation is so simple, notice when the element enters the viewport, its top value is less than the viewport height. So that's one condition that needs to be met, the y or top value of the element must be less than the height of the viewport. That said, if we keep scrolling though, the condition is still satisfied, yet the element is outside the viewport, and here I need you to focus on the bottom value. This one is easier to notice. Once the bottom value is greater than 0, the element shows up, and that's the second condition that needs to be met. That's vertically, but the exact same thing can be applied horizontally. First condition, the left or x value must be less than the width of the viewport, and the second one is that right must be positive, and that's it. Now let's apply that to a real world example. As you see I have already created a sort of a home page for a photography blog, which elements are hidden initially, but will be revealed when the visitor scrolls enough to reach their location on the page. Having said that, the revealing effects are basically a set of very simple CSS keyframes that we are going to add to elements using JavaScript. So here, I have already stored each element in a constant and added the scroll event to the document to trigger the revealing animation. In this case, the width of the document doesn't exceed the width of the viewport, so we need only the first two conditions. In addition to that, I want to animate elements only if the user scrolls from top to bottom, so if somehow the page is opened at a certain point way down, 
I want the animation to occur, so when they scroll up, they'll see the elements in their final state. So starting with the title and the hero section, here we don't need any JavaScript, we just need to add the animation to the element in the CSS code directly, because once opened, the hero section will be already in the viewport. That done, let's go to the next section and start with text, and here of course we need to apply what we learned earlier. So the first thing we need to do is to get the height of the viewport. And the second thing is to get the top or y value of the element we want to animate or its parent, which is exactly what I did here. Then we can use an if statement to check if the condition is met, if so the animation will be added to the wanted element. As you see, since I triggered the animation based on the appearance of the entire container, not the text element itself, the animation starts a bit early that we can see it taking place. To fix that, we can obviously change the condition to be based on the text entering the viewport, not the entire section, or we can add some additional scrolling space. That means instead of triggering the animation when the top edge of the container is in the viewport, we can make it in a way that the animation is triggered when half or one third of the container's height is in the viewport. In this case, after testing, the sweet spot is two thirds of the container's height. So the first thing we need to do is to get the height of the container and then simply add two thirds of its value to the section's top. To easily understand this, think of the right part of the condition as the amount of scrolling that needs to be done to make the top edge of the element appear in the viewport, plus the amount of scrolling that needs to be done to make two thirds of the container appear. And there we go, now we can see the animation occurring. The rest is pretty much the same. And then again, the same thing needs to be done to the third section, except that we don't need the additional scrolling amount.
And there we go. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.